it's Premiership semi-final time and I'm excited, just as excited I was when I did the preview for the first semi-final, which I'll link just up there. But this one is all about the second semi-final of the weekend and it's Saturday afternoon at the Rec with Bath versus Sale. And in this video, I'll tell you why I think Bath will make it through. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel, uh, here with you through end of the season and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, before team selection happened, I still had Bath as being favourites, but similar to the other game, now that I've seen the selection, I make them even stronger favourites. I think they will not almost certainly go through, but yeah, I think they're, they're very much the favourites to take it over a sale team. Now, just previously, previous to the selection, I was seeing that with the emotions of each team, I think Bath have been building. They know they're probably in line for a semi-final for quite some time. They've been able to mix and match a few players and emotionally getting ready for this huge semi-final. Whereas Sale have been on the edge for quite some time. It was a long shot for them to make the semi-finals. I am wondering, I'm questioning whether... That is their cup final. Actually making the semi-finals, whether that is going to be a, such a big achievement that they might not be able to raise themselves to the levels necessary to go to the wreck on Saturday and get a win. It's tough. These emotional things are really tough and you can get all the drivers in place that you think are uh, necessary during the week and Alex Sanderson is a master at that. But deep down, they've already gone to the well so many times. I wonder. I wonder if they'll be able to go again. Okay, looking at selections though, and Bath are essentially at full strength. And what that really means for them is they've got a full menu of options. Bath are a team that can really attack you in any way. Uh, they've got power up front now. They've got a good, very good solid set piece. Uh, maybe the best actually. And with their 10 and 12 back in place for a few weeks now, Russell and Redpath, they can attack you out wide as well. The try by Will Muir uh, last week, I think it was, or the week before, was an absolute delight against Northampton Saints. So they are highly skilled and they can attack in lots of different ways. Interestingly, selection-wise, Alfie Barbary is back at number eight after they had a flirtation with Bayless in that position. I wonder if this is form. I wonder if it was always going to be this way. Um, I wonder if it's getting some extra weight on the pitch to tackle this huge sale pack of forwards I'm not sure but one thing's for certain is that Barbary will be absolutely flying into this game at the weekend charging like honestly I don't think many other players can in world rugby he is a sight to behold when he's got the ball in his hands on to sale and this is where I really think the key things have happened in terms of selection and why I now think Bath are strong favourites no Manu Tuolagi not selected uh, did his hamstring in the final game of the regular season last week. And I think without him, it really puts a blunt edge on this sale attack. They become a little bit predictable. Um, they don't have that carrying threat through the middle. Uh, so it's Sam James and Rob Dupree in the midfield for them. And with the greatest respect, two very good players. But they don't, they don't, I wouldn't be fearful of them. If I was the Bath midfield, I wouldn't be fearing that. You feel that you could probably handle them. Uh, Sam James brings the added um, difficulty or challenge, maybe, with his excellent kicking game. And Robert Dupree obviously can kick the ball as well. But it's not... I oh, don't expect to see them running a huge amount. Um, the other big thing, Tom Curry, available for selection, but only selected on the bench. Obviously, Sam Dugdale has been outstanding in recent weeks. Along with Ben Curry, Ben Curry, who always seems to be playing second fiddle, whether it's to his brother for the last five or six years, or now Sam Dugdale, who's picked up two Man of the Match awards in the last three weeks. Ben Curry still absolutely excellent and captain as well. However, George Ford is the person I really want to talk about here because he made an appearance on the For Love of Rugby podcast this week and if you haven't listened to that one yet I strongly suggest you do it's with Ben Youngs and Dan Cole and the level of detail and insight that those guys go into along with their guests like George Ford this week is absolutely eye-opening it's um I loved it so George Ford this week talked about all the things he thinks about well maybe not all of them but a lot of the things he thinks about when it comes to managing a game and 
they can go at it in lots of different ways. Do you do they want to just put their game on the pitch? Do they think right if we do our thing the best, then it doesn't really matter what the opposition do. We're going to stand the best chance of winning. Or do they look at the opposition and go, Rob, we want to take that away from them. We want to stop them doing that. And we can we can wait. We can be patient in the game and wait to put our stamp on it later. Now, what do I think? What do I think they're going to try and do this week? Sail away a, a, a probably raucous wreck. I think they're going to try and stop Bath playing. I don't think Sale have been all that fluent in attack. And with, along with Tuolagi missing this week now, I think they are going to look to be territorial I think they're going to try and play all the game in sales half I don't think they care about having the ball I think they're going to look to turn the wingers around who are both big tall men and get a lot of contestable kicks up because Tom Roebuck is one of the best in the business about going and retrieving those kicks so that's what I expect from sale I think uh, I mean you may call it negative pragmatic maybe is a better word I think that's where they'll see their best chance of route to victory in this game is if they can just quieten the crowd, if they can give Bath nothing to feed off. Don't let them get into their rhythm because when Bath start playing, they are absolutely accurate and they flow and their support plays brilliant and they've got two of the very best halfbacks in Ben Spencer and Finn Russell to take the right options. I think Sale are going to try and stifle all of that, try and compact the game down and smash them physically. However... I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think Bath have got a big enough and ugly enough pack to get enough good front football. And I think the Bath halfbacks will create enough for them to score. And while it'll be tight for a while, I think Bath will come through and win comfortably by more than two scores in the end. Alrighty, that's my call. That's what I think. Uh, What do you think? Do you think there's any players that are going to play a massive role that I've not picked out? Any other tactics, any other tactical side of things that you think I'm missing or you think it will be different? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.